So let's talk about Saikot Chakrabadi. He is originally from the Bernie Sanders 2016 campaign. He then went on to be one of the four original co-founders of Justice Democrats, along with Kyle Kalinske and Jen Uger. And I'm forgetting who the fourth person is, but nonetheless, he was a part of that original group. He then went on to become AOC's chief of staff. And now the establishment has kind of targeted him because he is just as outspoken in condemning the Democratic Party and all of their failures and weaknesses. So on Twitter, he oftentimes calls out Democrats who are corporatists. He calls out Democratic Party leadership, Nancy Pelosi, and he's relentless. He's doing what somebody who is on the left should be doing. And let's just take a moment to think about this. Like, do you think that people who are progressive, who are democratic socialists, such as myself, do you think we want to spend any time criticizing the Democratic Party when the Republican Party is a proto-fascist party and they are as extreme, perhaps, as they've ever been? I mean, do you think we enjoy wasting time on this? No, of course we want to move on to the Republican Party. But the Democratic Party has become so bad, so weak, they become Trump and Republican Party enablers, and we shouldn't have to call them out. We shouldn't have to hold their hands and make them oppose Donald Trump in a meaningful way. But that's the reality of the situation. That's the world that we're living in. We are not in a world where we have a competent opposition party that keeps this fascist party in check. The Republicans. So what do we have to do? We have to hold them accountable so they hold Republicans accountable as well. Again, I would rather dedicate all of my time into attacking Republicans, but Democrats have power and they're the closest to us ideologically, even if there's a lot of distance there. So what we have to do is get them to use their power to keep Republicans in check. So when Sycott calls out Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party's corporatism, he's doing a public service because now he's in a position that is relatively influential. He is the chief of staff for one of the most popular politicians in America. Certainly, perhaps one with the most name recognition out of everyone, AOC. So he's calling them out because he wants them to do better, not because he's trying to create this false equivalence and that Democrats are bad, you know, and Republicans are good. Of course not. But what you're going to see here is how the Democratic Party establishment responds to his criticism. And predictably, they don't take it very well. But before we get to their response, let's get to what Sycott is saying, because I don't think these criticisms are even that controversial. So he tweeted out, the greatest threat to mankind is the cowardice of the Democratic Party. This is a quote from a Ryan Grimm article that he shared. He says, if Democratic leaders cannot lead fearlessly in a time like this, we may not get another chance. Our civilization is at stake. All these articles want to claim what a legislative mastermind Pelosi is, but I'm seeing way more strategic smarts from freshman members like AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley. Pelosi is just mad that she got outmaneuvered again by Republicans. Pelosi claims we can't focus on impeachment because it's a distraction from kitchen table issues, but I challenge you to find voters that can name a single thing House Democrats have done for their kitchen table this year. What is this legislative mastermind doing? We are in a time that calls for leaders that lead. Leaders like AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley. Voters want representatives who will fight even if they lose. The fact that House Democrats Democratic leadership doesn't see this is incredibly troubling. So he's approaching this from the position that, hey, I need you to do your job. I need you to do better because you are the only governmental force that actually has the power and authority to check Republican Party tyranny. Do your fucking job. Do your job. But Nancy Pelosi isn't doing her job. Like, we shouldn't have to force Nancy Pelosi to stand up to Donald Trump. She should see that this party is becoming increasingly fascist and there should be a switch that goes off in her head where she just knows, okay, I need to defeat him and stop their harmful legislative agenda. But that's not happening. That's not happening. So that's why people like Sycott, people like myself, have to stand up and say, Democrats, where are you? We need you to fight. And that's what he's doing. The point is that he's calling out Nancy Pelosi by name, 
because she's failing. But here's what they're really pissed about. This is a tweet that he put out recently after Nancy Pelosi and 90 Democrats caved to Mitch McConnell. Didn't realize this needed to be said, but you can be someone who does not personally harbor ill will towards a race, but through your actions still enable a racist system. And a lot of new Democrats and blue dogs did that today. This is in reference to my comparing blue dogs and new Democrats to 1940s Southern Democrats. Southern Democrats enabled a racist system too. I have no idea how personally racist they all are, and we're seeing the same dynamic play out now. Now, somebody then responded to him and said, well, does it make sense to say that a congresswoman like Sharice Davids, who is a Native American, does it make sense to say that someone like her is enabling a racist system when obviously she personally wouldn't be benefiting from that at all? And this is what he said in response. I think the point still stands. I don't think people have to be personally racist to enable a racist system. And the same could even be said of the Southern Democrats. I don't believe Sharice is a racist person, but her votes are showing her to enable a racist system. And he says this because she voted for the bill that funds Donald Trump's border migrant detention, concentration camps, uh, with absolutely no checks, um, no uh, care, no uh, accountability whatsoever. She voted for that. So he's calling her out because she did something that is harmful, that enables fascism. He called that out. Democrats absolutely hated that. And here's what they said in response. Who is this guy and why is he explicitly singling out a Native American woman of color? Her name is Congresswoman Davids, not Sharice. She is a phenomenal new member who flipped a red seed blue. Keep her name out of your mouth. So as you can see, um, how dare you respond to a question about Sharice Davids? How dare you? You see, because the Democratic Party, they really need us to believe that they are fantastic on social justice and racial issues because that's literally all that they have to prove to their left-wing base that they aren't as bad as Republicans. I mean, if you take away this idea that Democrats are good on gender, race, you know, sexual orientation, gender identity... Uh, what's left? The equivalence between then, them and Republicans would vanish. So they have to protect this idea that they're absolutely anti-racist and anyone who says otherwise is in the wrong. And now, since he said that, since he challenged that sacred idea, they are coming after him. And they're coming after him really, really hard. In fact, members of the Democratic Party establishment want him fired and are directly calling for that. Now, as Mike Lillis and Scott Wong of The Hill write, in recent weeks, Saikot Chakrabadi has tweeted messages suggesting Pelosi is an ineffective legislator that a Native American lawmaker voted to, quote, enable a racist system and that moderate Democrats are modern-day segregationists because they backed a Senate border aid bill. It's all put additional pressure on Ocasio-Cortez, a New York Democrat who has taken Congress by storm. That's just a terrible statement to make. That's a terrible statement to make. Representative Gregory Meeks, a Congressional Black Caucus member, said of Chakrabadi's segregationist tweets, somebody's got to be held accountable. If my staff did something that was not right, then I have to handle my staff. The question is, do you think it's appropriate for your staff to say something like that? Added Meeks, who in recent days has threatened to back a primary challenger against Ocasio-Cortez. Chakrabadi's outspoken style, combined with his history of fighting to topple in incumbent Democrats deemed too conservative to bear the party brand has made him a target of fierce new scrutiny while raising questions about his longevity on Capitol Hill. Do I think AOC's chief of staff needs to be fired? Of course I do, said a moderate Democratic lawmaker. Who is in charge in that office? Is she unable to fire him for his racist comments? Another Democratic lawmaker added, my chief would have the honor to resign if he tweeted those things. Chakrabadi is a snot-nosed punk who doesn't have a clue clue about the liberal battles the grizzled 79-year-old speaker has led over the years, former Representative Rahm Emanuel, who served under Pelosi as head of the House Democratic Caucus and campaign arm, said in an interview with the New York Times. Now, there were more quotes that I didn't even touch on from uh, Democratic aides, representatives, and strategists who were saying, you know, it's really odd that he hasn't been reprimanded for his racist comments, even though he was calling out racism. He's being racist. 
because he was talking about a woman of color, even though he's a man of color, but he's being racist. And it's really odd that AOC hasn't done anything. Um, maybe she should fire him. Maybe we should get her kicked out of Congress if she doesn't rein in her attack dog. I mean, this is what the Democratic Party does. I said this once, I'll say it again. They are resisting progressives. They're resisting the left more strongly than they resist Republicans. Do you ever see members of the Democratic Party establishment go this hard against Republicans? I mean, they'll take shots at Republicans, sure. They'll talk about how much of a threat Donald Trump is, but they continue to enable him. They vote for his military budgets. They vote to fund his concentration camps while not having any type of stipulation for accountability or any extra resources to make the migrants actually not feel uh, horrible, like they're suffering. I mean, this is what they do. So when Sycott called out them and the way that they enabled, you know, the racist system that we have in place currently, the racist status quo, that was a bridge too far. Because when you go after the Democratic Party when it comes to issues related to race and any social or racial justice issues, then you're attacking their legitimacy directly because that's all they got. Again, they're conservative economically. So if people start to lose faith in their ability to stand up on behalf of people when it comes to racial and social justice, they're toast. I mean, they're already pretty much incompetent and incapable of running successful campaigns against Republicans, but I mean, they're toast if they lose that. That's why they're responding so forcefully to Shycott here, but he needs to keep it up because if they don't want to be criticized, there's a very easy solution that can get people like Shycott, people like myself, off of their backs. They can fucking do better. It's that simple. Stand up to Republicans and start resisting them even half as much as you do progressives. That's a start. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.